Your friends, let's turn this morning. We're reading, please, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, and we're going to just gather our thoughts around the first six verses. Ephesians chapter 1, then, please. And we're going to begin to read in verse 1. Praise God. Bless you, Lord. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Amen. Just those first six verses. And again, as always, we just commit the Lord's word to his blessing this morning. No doubt you have heard the story about uh, the man or the farmer who found an eagle's egg. And he took that egg and he put it in the the nest along with the rest of the turkey eggs that he had on the farm. And eventually, if you've heard the story, you'll know that eventually an eagle hatched with the brood. And of course, uh, the rest of the brood of turkeys. And it grew up along with them. And that eagle lived his life, and all of his life he did what the turkeys did. He scratched in the dirt, he, you know, he flew in a, in, a, in a thrashing of wings, so to speak, just a, a few feet above the ground, just the way the turkeys would have done. Friends, scientists call that type of behavior, they call it behavior imprinting. Something that's imprinted into the nature. And that's what happened to that eagle in that situation. You want to, if you want to call it, you could call it an identity crisis. Now, it's not a midlife crisis, all right? It's an identity crisis before we go any further. But it's called behavioral imprinting. And I want to suggest this morning that there are many people in life, there are many people in the Christian life who have experienced behavior imprinting or have experienced or are experiencing identity crisis crisis in life. So many people who know the Lord have been so imprinted by the world that they don't know who they really are in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they see themselves, to use the, to use the story that we're thinking about, the example that we're using, they see themselves as turkey, turkeys while all of the time God in his word tells us that we are eagles. Do you believe that today? Friends, we have a high calling in Christ Jesus. Bless his holy name. But the problem is that so often in life, in the pressures of life, in the things that we we go through in life, in our upbringing and the various stages of life, so often we have been conditioned to think, to talk and to act with the turkey syndrome instead of the eagle syndrome that God has given to us. Now the book of Ephesians If you're a Warren Wearsby fan, Warren Wearsby calls this book, Be Rich. And whenever the Apostle Paul wrote to the Ephesians, in this little epistle, he gave them so many uh, glorious truths that speak about the wealth, that speak about the riches of the believer. And Ephesians, amongst other things, shows us our true identity. It's, It's a book that helps us Get out of the turkey syndrome and it helps us, praise God, to soar like eagles. Would you like to soar like an eagle? Bless his wonderful name. God can help us to do that. The book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, a verse that we know so well. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as of eagles. Now, Ephesians shows us who we are. You'll find that in chapters 1 to 3 of this book. 
And then Ephesians also shows us where we stand as a result of who we are. And you'll find that in the final three chapters of the book. But we're concentrating this morning on the first six verses of chapter one here for just a time. Look at this here, verses one and two. It tells us here we are a saintly people. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, we are a saintly people. Paul calls himself an apostle. An apostle, of course, is a sent one. And he says it's by the will of God. Paul wasn't an apostle because of his education. He wasn't an apostle because of his personality. He wasn't an apostle because of his spirituality. He wasn't even an apostle because of his good looks like I have. Ah, I knew that would get you back. <laughs> I lie an odd time. Forgive me. <laughs> But you know, he's not an apostle because of any of these things. He's an apostle, he says, by the will of God. God called him. God chose him. His His authority as an apostle was through the Lord Jesus Christ by the will of God. And there's something tremendous about that. Because believers or Christians... Call call us whatever you like. We are called to be saints. Saints, friends. That's what Paul writes here. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints. To the saints. In Romans chapter 1, verse 7, Paul says, Among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ, beloved of God, called to be saints. Read the opening verses of 2 Corinthians. Paul writes, to the saints at Corinth. Read the opening verses of the, of the epistle to the Philippians. Paul writes to the saints. Read the opening verses of the epistle to the Colossians. Paul writes to the saints. The word saint does not refer to a few pious people whom some church denomination has decided to canonize. That is not what a saint is. The word saint is a reference to God's people, the people who have been born again by the Spirit of God and washed in the precious blood of the Lamb of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Saints are people who live here and who live now. Amen. We're saints today. Oh, dear me. eh? We may not feel like saints, but friends, that's who saints are. A saint is not someone who has passed into glory And the church, as I've said, or some denomination, decides to to canonize that person, to make a big gun of them. A saint is you. If you're born again of the Spirit of God, you are a saint of God. Look at the person beside you. Hey, that's a saint if they're saved. Whether you get on with her or whether you don't, or whether you get on with him or whether you don't, that's a saint of God. Because that's what the Scripture says a saint is. Saints are people whose lives have been changed by the power of God. The word saint, by the way, is the word hagios, which means set apart or or consecrated, sacred or holy. We have been set apart by our Lord Jesus Christ unto God our Father. Whenever God saved us, God set us apart for himself. He set us apart for his service. And he declared you and he declared me to be holy. Like the Apostle Paul, not because of education, not because of spirituality, not because of anything else, but he declared us to be holy because of the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's where we stand today, completely upon his sacrifice. And today we are called saints. You know, there was a time whenever we were sinners, A time whenever we were afar off from God. But praise God, we are not what we used to be. Amen? We are not what we used to be. Because Jesus called us. And Jesus made us the saints of God. Bless his holy name. Now Paul refers to these saints in these verses here. In the opening verses. Verse 1 actually. He refers to these saints as being faithful. Faithful. True saints are people whose lives will be characterized by a lifestyle 
of faithfulness. And notice the phrase in verse 1. He says, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. I want to say to you this morning that that phrase, in Christ Jesus, or a similar phrase, appears 15 times in this epistle to the church at Ephesus. You see, friends, today, who we are, what we possess, the position that we occupy as believers, those things are all a direct result of our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. We are in Christ Jesus. There was a time whenever we were in the world. There was a time whenever we were living in sin. But if you're saved today, praise God, you are no longer in the world. You are in Christ Jesus. Amen. And whether you aspire at any time to be a leader, whether you aspire at any time to do great things, or whether you do not, you are still a saint of God, and you are still in Christ Jesus. And that should make every single one of us say, praise God. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but it's according to His mercy. And today we have a heavenly father. Today we have a heavenly citizenship. Today we have a heavenly position. And praise God, we have a heavenly home. Amen. Hey, our brother prayed about it this morning. In my father's house are many mansions. Hallelujah. And we're going, you know, I have a mansion just over the hilltop. Isn't that right? In that bright land where we'll never grow old. Friends, we may live here now, but we are citizens of of heaven. We are saints of God because God has given us grace, his own deserved goodness, his own deserved favor, his his own deserved love. He has given us grace and praise God, we have the peace of God. Now look at verse 2 for a moment. He says, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, friends, we might live in this world. We might even live, so to speak, in in a turkey coop. But there is coming a day, isn't there? Praise God. Whenever we will be with him for all of eternity. Out from the very presence of sin itself. Into the presence of pure glory. Into the presence of pure holiness. Into the presence of pure love to ever be with the Lord. We are saintly people. Moving on very quickly, we are also a blessed people. Look at verse 3. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The word blessed there is proclaiming a message of praise. We have something to praise Him for. We're a blessed people. Mind you, I'm going to be very honest to look at some of you, you'd wonder if you have anything to praise him for. But we have something to praise him for. He has saved us, and we are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Praise God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, bless his holy name, has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Because God is so good to us, we should bless him. <laughs> we should praise him. I'm trying really hard here. We should praise him. You know, that's why we sing hymns. That's why we sing choruses and, and spiritual songs. To praise him. To bless him. It's not to spend 15 minutes in the service, by the way. It's an offering of praise unto God. Because he's worthy of our praise. And we do these things to bless him and to praise him. The psalmist says, bless the Lord, O my soul, listen to it, and all that is within me. Not just what I decide to do in a half-hearted way. Not just what I decide to do as and when I decide to do it. But the psalmist says, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Praise him always. Praise him with all that we have, with harp and with organ and voice. His loud hallelujahs proclaim. Is that what we sang this morning? Because it's all that is within me. 
He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Psalm 37, 25 says, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children or his seed begging bread. Romans 8, verse 32 says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all? All things. Friends, since God did not refrain or since God did not hold back giving us his own son, giving us his only begotten son, since God did not hold back on our behalf, can we do anything less than give to him our all? Than give to him our praise? Than give to him our worship, the very best that we can offer unto him? Glory to his name. Because that's what he deserves today. And he says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings. They are not just natural blessings, but friends, they are spiritual blessings. You know, so often in life, we focus upon the natural. We live life so often in the natural. But friends, the spiritual is much, much better. And here he tells us he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And we see those blessings opened up for us in the following verses. You can take this, look through it, and, and, and study it and read it for yourself. Those blessings are opened up in this little epistle. That's why the commentator Warren Weasby calls his book on this epistle, Be Rich. Because one by one, those blessings are open to us. That we might see exactly what God has done for us. And friends, there are so many of those blessings And these are not an inheritance. Let me stress this. They are not an inheritance that's waiting for us. But these are ours right here and right now as we walk this scene of time. You see, we will not one day transform from turkeys into eagles. Friends, we have already been transformed. Hallelujah. The blessings of God, the promises of God are yea and amen. In our Lord Jesus Christ. Not for something in the future. But something for here and now. The eternal life if you're saved today. The eternal life which you possess. Is not something that you're going to step into in the future. It's something that you stepped into. The moment you put your faith and your trust. In the Lord Jesus Christ. Eternal life with him. Started there and then. You see we are possessors. Of these things today. And God has made us. Eagles, even here, right here and now. You see, often the devil, and the reason I'm saying that is because often the devil and the world has us asking for and has us searching for what we already have in our Lord Jesus Christ. And so often, you know, he keeps us busy striving to be what God says we already are. And God says so much about us. That's why I've titled this little message today, Know Who You Are. Because God has given us so much. And God says so much about every single one of us. And yet in the world so often we're running around trying to be what God says we already are. Trying to have what God says we already have. And so there are some, you know, who will spend their time asking for love. Romans 5 and 5 says, The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. There are some who journey through life and they're looking for peace. But in John chapter 14 and verse 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give. He doesn't say I will give. He says I give unto you. We already have the love of God in our hearts. We already have the peace of Christ. Sometimes we, in situations we pray for joy. Or sometimes we're looking for happiness. But in John 15 verse 11, Jesus says, These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy might be full. 2 Peter 1 verse 3 says, His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life. And to godliness. Friends we already have. So much of the stuff. That we spend our time. Trying to get. And trying to achieve. God declares that he has blessed us already. 
with all spiritual blessings. God has already given us all that we need to have a life of victory and a life of blessing in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God has already given that. And he has promised to meet our every single need. Every single need. Every need is hand supplying. Every good in him I see. On his strength divine relying. He is more or he is all in all to me. Friends, he promises to meet our needs. And we need to learn in life to soar like the eagle. To soar up above the problems of life. To soar up above the storms of life. To soar up above the things that would keep us down in life. Above the turmoil. Above the anxiety. Above the the difficulties. Because today we are in Christ. Do you hear me? In Christ. In the Son of God. Who's seated at the Father's right hand in glory. And the Apostle Paul steps into chapter 2 of this book. And he highlights that great truth to us again. Because in chapter 2 we are told that even when we were dead in sins. God quickened us together with Christ. Verse 6 of chapter 2. And he raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. You see we may live here. But praise God, our citizenship is in glory. We may have a Savior that we worship here, but we are seated with Him today in the glory. Hallelujah. And we are called by God to know who we are. And friends, that's every single one of us if we're saved. You don't have to be some great person in the work of God. You don't have to be some great leader in the work of God. This goes back to something that my brother Sam Hutchinson and I were just talking about the other day. All you have to be is in Christ. And praise God, you have all of these things because we are all one, amen, in our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we are already fit for heaven because of the cross of Calvary. And I trust that's the position of every single one of us here today. And if that is not your position, I tell you again, there's a Savior who loves you who died upon a cross for you, to make available to you these things that we are thinking about this morning. And it begins whenever you come as a sinner before the cross and seek his mercy and seek his forgiveness. And if you're here this morning and you don't know him, I want to encourage you to do that, to take him as your Lord and your Savior and know the joy of the blessings of God unleashed upon your life. But if we're saved today, We are blessed with all the fullness that that lofty position in Christ can bring to our lives. Friends, we're a blessed people. Amen. We are a chosen. Let the truth of that touch your heart for a moment. Chosen by God himself. You know, I think that's tremendous. The God who reigns supreme over everything, and yet he chose me. Huh? Over six billion people on this planet today. And God, somewhere in the midst of that, knew me. He saved me. He did the same for you, if you're saved. In John chapter 15, Jesus said very plainly, You have not chosen me. But he says, I have chosen you. Friends, get the truth of that. Allow the truth of that to to, to thrill, to bless your soul. There was nothing in us that made us want him. In fact, all that we really wanted was our sin. Isn't that right? Huh? How true that is. Lived in sin, shapen in sin. All we wanted was our sin. But somewhere in the grace, and somewhere in the plan, and somewhere in the mercy of God, by his Spirit, he began to speak to your heart. And he began to speak to to your life. And you wanted your sin, but oh, he wanted you. And you still were living in sin, but he was still speaking to your life. And bit by bit by bit by bit, he wooed you. He wooed you away from sin. He won you on to himself. What a glorious truth that is today for all of us who are saved. As I've said, let the truth of that really grip your soul. Nothing in us. And yet he just loved us, praise God. And he spoke to us. 
And we live for the pleasure of sin. And that's the truth. And there's no getting away from that. There's no hiding that. And Jesus says plainly, look, he says, I know how you lived. I know what your life was like. But he says, you didn't choose me. I chose you. Friends, what a glory. I have chosen you. Paul says here in verse 4, that very thing, according as he has chosen us in him. Look at it. Before the foundation of the world. That means that before Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and whether you believe in a gap theory or whether you don't, that means that before Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, before there was anything here, anything, God knew you. Huh? Isn't that tremendous? And God knew me. He knew us personally. He knew what we would be like. He knew the personalities we would have. He knew what you would like and dislike. He knew what direction your life would go. He knew exactly when he would save you. Before he ever created one atom in this universe around us. Friends, I think that's tremendous. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the word. God knew you and God knew me personally. And whenever it came, that time in his plan to set you loose upon a world into which you would be born, the Bible says he knit you together in your mother's womb. He made you exactly what he wanted you to be. And then he let you loose on the world. And you lived life for whatever number of years you lived and you made a mess of this and you made a mess of that. You know, and you made a mistake here. And you made a mistake there. And yet and with all, all of the time, his eye was upon you. Bringing you to that time in your experience when you would reach out and you would trust the Lord Jesus Christ. And he looked forward from before the foundation of the world. He looked forward to the day whenever you would be born again into his kingdom and you would become his very own. Before ever he created a single atom in the universe around us. And God determined that he would have a people. A people who would be in Christ. Who would be holy. A people who would be set apart. A people who would have a, a faithful nature. A people whom he would pour blessings upon. Not just in this life. But praise God that would last right out into the countless ages of all eternity. And they would be, according to his word, a people who would be completely without blame before him. Isn't that glorious? Huh? Those times whenever stuff goes through your head that shouldn't go through your head. Those times whenever you say something that you just should not say. Those times whenever you are tempted and maybe fall. Those times whenever you have desires within you that you know are not in accordance with what the word of God says they should be. Yet, nonetheless, God says that in Christ Jesus, you are a saint. You are set apart. You are blessed. And you are without blame before him. Because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. Well, friends, aren't you glad you're saved today? Know who you are. Because that's who we are today. And it's not because of any merit. And the Apostle Paul makes that abundantly plain in these opening verses about his own life. It's not because of any merit that we have. But it's because of the will of God. And you're chosen. And I am chosen. And you have been called. And I have been called. And God has poured into our hearts and into our lives all of these other things that we're thinking about today. You know, that person beside you is Saint Greta, Saint John, Saint Willie. Isn't that tremendous? Because of what he has done for us. Friends, let the truth of this really touch our hearts. You see, we need to know who we are today. Because we're living at a time in the world around us. We are living at a time when people are unsure 
of what is certain in life. You know, there's nothing absolute anymore. We've talked about this before. You know, they'll say to you nowadays, you can't call such and such a thing sin because you might feel like that. Somebody else might not feel like that. And we're living at a time whenever truth is being challenged. And we live at a time whenever principles are being eroded. And we're living at a time whenever anything goes and you should be questioning everything. Isn't it good today to know that we can stand upon the Word of God? The Bible says the Word of God is forever settled in heaven. And we don't have to question it, but we can stand upon it. We can stand upon the promises. We can allow the truth of it to touch our hearts and to touch our lives. And we can be sure, we can be absolutely sure about who we are in our Lord Jesus Christ. What a mighty God we have today. What a mighty God we serve. What a glorious heavenly Father who knows Every single one of us by name. What a, what a glorious, what a beautiful relationship we have with him. And friends, what a savior our Lord Jesus Christ really is. A loving friend. He has proved himself to be to us over and over and over again. And what a glorious position is ours in him. Seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Are you glad you're saved today? Do you know who you are today? Eh, You're a saintly people. You're a blessed people. Praise God, you're a chosen people. Called to him. And it says in verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted. Praise God we're accepted. Amen. You know, you might live in a world where Many people don't accept you. You might work in a workplace where you maybe have difficulty with people accepting you. And yet today, you're accepted at the highest throne, at the highest authority in all of the universe because you are in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Friends, what a glory it is today just to be a saint of God. We're eagles. Amen. And he wants us in these days of time to try and get a handle on this stuff. To really understand what he's trying to say to us whenever he speaks like this to us in love from his precious truth and from his word. That he might build our lives. That he might strengthen us. That he might encourage us. And that he might enable us to rise and to be everything that he wants us to be, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. I want us to stand for just a moment this morning. Let's just stand again in his presence. I'm going to sing our closing praise in just a moment or two. But in your heart today, I want you just to, to reflect upon what God has done for you. He hasn't just saved you. But he has enriched your life. He hasn't just saved you from sin. But he has called you. He has separated you unto himself. And he has poured more blessings in there than you have yet experienced. They are there. They are there in Christ. They are there now. And on the back of those, he wants you to rise. And to be drawn closer to him. And closer to him and closer to him, and to be changed to be more and more and more and more like him, that you might experience more and more and more of his goodness. Just lift your heart for a moment before him right now. You may want to open your mouth and do that. You may just want to do it silently. But just just lift our hearts for a moment. Let's acknowledge his love. Let's acknowledge his goodness to us. Let's thank him for choosing us. Let's praise him for his hand upon us. Let's thank him for blessing us. Let's praise him for the relationship that he has with us. There's so much to thank him for today. And yet, friends, so often we come into the house of God and we fail to even open our mouths to give him thanks. Is it any wonder Jesus said if these were to hold their peace, the very stones would cry out? Eh? 
You know, he was speaking that to Jews. Paul tells us that we are living stones. And today we Gentiles are called to cry out. Whenever the Jews fail to praise him for who he is, today we know him for who he is. And we are called to cry out. The very stones will cry out. He is God of all creation. And yet he loves each one of us. He knows you by name. And he has chosen you. And he has called you. Called even you. Let me rephrase that. Called even me. Unto himself. Blessed God. Blessed God. Lord, today we just love you. We just praise you, Lord. And Lord, we meet together in this place, privileged, like so many people, others in our land today and various churches, right across the globe. People who are saved and washed in your precious blood. People who have the assurance of heaven. Because of what you have done for us. People who are in fellowship with you. Because you took the time to search us out. Lord, people today who are your people. Because somewhere right away back in eternity. We were chosen in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, it blows our mind today. Lord, the ways of God. They are so high. The thoughts of God are beyond finding out. And we just bow in humble adoration before you this day. And we just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your unspeakable gift. Thank you for Jesus. We thank you for everything that you've done for us. We ask, oh God, as we just consider these things today, Lord, just a few very simple truths, yet so profound. We pray, O Lord, that you will touch our lives. That you will encourage, Lord, where there's needs, where there's problems today. Maybe stuff that has already been lifted to you earlier in the meeting. Lord, we bring it all before you right now. And we ask you, Lord, help us to look heavenward. Help us to keep our eyes fixed upon our blessed Lord and Savior. Always looking upward, Lord, above the storm, above the turmoils, above the problems. We thank you, Lord, we can soar with you, blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So, Lord, we ask that you will encourage your people, each and every one, that you will bless your people, each and every one. And we pray, Lord, that you would enable us indeed to rise, to be everything that you have already said that we are for your name's sake and for your glory. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord.